Well, good afternoon, Vice Admiral Tracy, Vice Admiral Rupp, Vice Admiral Oliver, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this afternoon's ceremony. We're, we're gathered in this historic setting to celebrate the career accomplishments of two men, Admiral Robert Natter and Captain Thomas Kelly, and to induct them into the Naval Postgraduate Hall of Fame. Both men have had significant impact on the Navy, their communities, and the nation, and each of them represents the values and integrity that NPS, as an institution of higher learning, embraces and expects from our faculty, staff, students, and graduates. You may sit down, yes ma'am, of course. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. The NPS Hall of Fame was established in 2001 to honor exceptional members of the NPS community for their leadership and commitment to public service. The Naval Postgraduate School has had the privilege of inducting many exceptional individuals over the years, stellar leaders who once walked the halls of the Naval Postgraduate School as students and who now serve as mentors and leaders to many. Examples of the class inductees who you see on the wall here uh, behind us include Admiral Mike Mullen, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Michael Hagee, former Marine Corps Commandant, Vice Admiral Fat Tracy, who's with us today, former Chief of Education and Training and Director of the Naval Staff, and the first woman to achieve the rank of Vice Admiral. The Honorable Everett Alvarez, a POW in Vietnam for eight years, who remained in public service, rising to become Deputy Director of both the Peace Corps and the Veterans Administration. International graduates, such as Vice Admiral Alberto Soto, who rose to become the, com the Commander of Naval Operations of the Chilean Navy, and at this time last year, the Secretary of the Navy, Carlos Del Toro, also an alumnus, was here to induct Admiral Cecil Haney, former commander of the Pacific Fleet and the United States Strategic Command to the Naval Postgraduate School Hall of Fame. The tie that binds all NPS Hall of Fame members is that, though varied in their careers and accomplishments, each of them has demonstrated a lifelong selfless dedication to service, service to their countries, service their, to their communities, and service to the Naval Postgraduate School. Admiral Adder and Captain Kelly, I speak for the entirety of the Naval Postgraduate School and the Department of the Navy. When I say how pleased we are to have you here today with us and to thank you for your many years of dedicated and heroic service to our great nation. I'd now like to ask President uh, of NPS, Vice Admiral Anne Rondeau, to come forward and offer a moment. Well, what a great day for Naval Postgraduate School and what a great day to have these terrific heroes and leaders and civil servants and public servants to be able to honor them. This is actually the wall that we have for our Hall of Fame. When we build the Naval Innovation Center, we're going to have a completely new wall with all kinds of cool things on it to bring the Hall of Fame uh, leaders to the front of what it means to learn and have innovation. These two men, you heard about them yesterday, and you'll hear some more today from our, uh, from, from Commander Seneceros, as he gives to you their, the uh, citation. But more importantly, I hope that at the end of this, each of you will shake these leaders' hands. They are alumni who represent the very best of NPS, of men who served in active service, in war and combat heroically, but also were heroes to many people after that. They were heroes in the leadership of the fleet and the force. They were heroes in how they touched lives, in how they were exemplars as, as husbands and fathers and brothers and sons. They were heroes in that they were always an example and never failed in their character examples. We never had to worry that, that the next day they might, they might in some way be seized by by the wrong choices. They always chose well for us and for our nation. So we have the honor today to recognize them proudly as warrior scholars who learned a great deal while they were here, who rested and also were able to reflect while they were here. And that is part of our, our mission, is to provide the opportunity to reflect and be stronger and better. So it is my privilege to, in recognition of these men, and their uh, achievements, their leadership and truly great impact on our great country and on behalf of the NPS community and all of our alumni, our students, our faculty, our staff, to recognize them today in, at the NPS Hall of Fame. The person who will also be, we, we try really hard to make sure 
uh, and we even did this during COVID virtually, that an alum gives the next alumni their award. So we have the privilege today of also having not only a Medal of Honor recipient and terrific public servant, not only a Silver Star <coughs> recipient and a, and a terrific public servant, but also Emma Olson, also a warrior and a Silver Star awardee and a terrific public servant. This is the kind of people who all of us have the privilege and honor of saying, yes, we were able to touch their lives but profoundly. They touched ours. So, Commander, back over to you, sir. Would our guests please stand while Admiral Olson presents the medallion to Admiral Matt. Attention to award. Admiral Robert J. Matt enlisted in the Naval Reserve at 17 and attended boot camp before following two older brothers to the U.S. Naval Academy. He sought continuous duty and operations in the rivers and coastal waters off Vietnam. And after three years and long overdue for shore duty, Admiral Matter became officer in charge of a SEAL boat support detachment in the lower Mekong Delta. Three months in, the small craft was caught in a Viet Cong ambush and all aboard were killed or wounded. Seriously injured, Admiral Matter swam ashore and then back with one other crewman directing suppressing fire to bring the damaged boat through a hail of enemy fire. For that action, he was awarded the Silver Star and Purple Heart Medals. Admiral Matter earned his master's degree in management from the Naval Postgraduate School, completed destroyer school, and became operations officer on USS Bradley. From there, Admiral Matter returned to the U.S. Naval Academy as a company officer and then as a flag aide to the superintendent. Subsequent tours included executive officer of USS Hewitt, executive officer to the director, executive to the director of naval warfare, and commanding officer of USS Chandler. He graduated with distinction from the Naval War College and earned a master's degree in international relations from Salva Regina College. Admiral Natter served several tours in Washington, D.C., holding positions with the House Armed Service Committee, Joint Chiefs of Staff, Bureau of Naval Personnel, Office of Legislative Affairs, and as Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Plans, Policy, and Operations. Still leaving the Atlantic Fleet on September 11th, Admiral Natter quickly ordered Aegis cruisers up the Chesapeake Bay to provide an anti-aircraft shield over Washington, D.C. and George Washington to New York with a hastily sorted complement of fighter aircraft. Admiral Matter retired in 2003 and continues to serve on the Naval Academy Alumni Association, U.S. UDT SEAL National Museum, and NPS Foundation Advisory Council. Also awarding the medal is Vice Admiral Pat Tracy, also Hall of Fame Tracy present the medallion to Captain Kelly. Captain Thomas Kelly graduated from the College of Holy Cross in 1960 and was commissioned into the Navy. His early assignments as a surface warfare officer included time aboard the USS Pandemus, USS Davis, and USS Stickel. Kelly then volunteered to serve in Vietnam as a lieutenant commanding River Assault Division 152. On June 15, 1969, Kelly led River Assault Craft when they fell under heavy enemy attack. Kelly continued to protect and lead his men to safety. For this gallant effort, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Kelly, despite his injuries, continued his naval career, taking on the position of Executive Officer of US, USS Sample and Commanding Officer of USS Lang. While serving, Kelly earned his Master's Degree in Management from the Naval Postgraduate School and completed the Armed Forces Staff College in Norfolk, Virginia. Kelly retired from naval service as a, naval, as a captain for, after 30 years, ending his tour as the Director of Legislative Director of Legislation in the Bureau of Naval Personnel. After his military service, Kelly became the Massachusetts Department of Veterans Service Commissioner and was named Secretary of the Department in 2003. In 2011, Kelly retired from public service and focused on charitable pursuits. He is close with the Medal of Honor Society, previously serving as their president, Holy Cross O'Callaghan Society, Arlington National Cemetery, the Home Base Program, which treats veterans and active military with the hidden wounds of war, in partnership with the Boston Red Sox, 
Foundation, and Massachusetts General Hospital. He also serves on the board of directors of the USS Constitution Museum. Tracy asked if you uh, stay together up here, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, and I also invite forward uh, both the NPS president and uh, our provost, Dr. Scott Gardner, to join in the unveiling of the Hall of Fame plaques uh, for Admiral Nader <coughs> and Captain Kelly.
Thank you very much, Tom Renato and Captain Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, before uh, President Rondeau makes her concluding remarks, I'd like to recognize the efforts of the team who helped put this ceremony together, including the Naval Postgraduate School Foundation, which is sponsoring this afternoon's reception. Please give them a round of applause. So a moment of gratitude. Um, I want to thank a number of people here, and, and uh, one of them is our staff. All of these great sailors who did great things behind the scenes. Can we give the guys in Galvin Green <laughs> So a week into Commander Senator Saros uh, reporting for duty, I offered him the opportunity to learn all about NPS by being the chairman of our Hall of Fame ceremony. He learned a lot about NPS. It was not a day that he came in with anything but, but a, a level attitude about, this is, this is a lot of fun. President Rondo, and with a smile. But he worked really hard, and he took care of his guys and gals, and I just want to give this guy a, a note of gratitude for making a fabulous, fabulous week. Thank you very much. I also want to thank the Foundation. They have been terrific in so many ways. And Chairman, would you please just let us just do a hand wave there. And, uh, <laughs> we are stronger and better for you, and we appreciate the tone of gratitude that you give to us, and your gratitude to the nation and to leaders like, like these by the honor that you give to all of us, so thank you very much. Finally, to, um, to our Hall of Fame recipients. Hall of Fame recipients are, are, are uh, considered carefully. The faculty gets to consider them, and the administration does, but it's about the reputation that they have garnered over, uh, over their lifetime. And so I want to just thank them for their leadership and their legacy to us. And it's, a, it's kind of a reminder for all of us that the Hall of Fame recipients in the end are students who teach. The students who teach us about action, about decisions, about leadership, and about life. And so we want to thank you for being the teachers and, uh, to these learners and learners to the teachers and for the symbiosis that and Admiral Owen, uh, uh, Olson and I were talking about this, but this notion that we care about each other, we look out for each other. And I want to tell a quick story that I was, I was reminded about and then I'll, I'll close. If you listen to what Captain Kelly's Medal of Honor um, award says, but the, a boat was in danger, it was mechanically distraught, it could not move. He moved the other crafts around the disabled boat, and he went in front and led everybody out so that nobody got hurt. He did that his entire career, his entire life. That is also what Admiral Manor does. That's what these leaders do. They make sure that they take care of those around them, and they say, that they'll take the hit in order to have others survive and, and thrive. So thank you for being our teachers, and thank you all for coming here and honoring these, these, these men and honoring ourselves by saying thank you to them. So gratitude, thank you, and let's give these men a round of applause again, please. <laughs> taken so he can be up here with the with the um, with the uh, photos. We want to stay around for one more thing for Admiral Nader and then he will go down and they will both come back up and join us for refreshments. So Tom we're going to escort you down for your picture and we'll escort you down in a minute Admiral Nader. So go ahead and take a And Dr. Narducci, you want to come up here? Good afternoon everyone. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure to be here to play a very small part in this uh, ceremony. 
Um, when it was announced that Admiral Madden was going to be receiving this award, one of my faculty members uh, wrote to me and said, oh yeah, I've got some history, good history, um, <laughs> with the Admiral, and, and he wanted to make a presentation, so it is my pleasure today to introduce Professor Ian McNabb from the Physics Department with a presentation. Yeah, folks, get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was really uh, excited to see uh, Admiral Hatter and pleased to see Admiral Hatter being uh, 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 inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's uh, 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 something that brought to mind an event that happened 20 years ago, which I'm sure he's forgotten, um, but in the early 2000s. No In the early 2000s, the Navy was considering uh, investing in railroads as a technology for long-range shore bombardment and for missile defense. And uh, a number of meetings were held with a variety of people, but eventually it percolated up to Admiral Natter, and um, we arranged to uh, do a trial, under the sea trial um, auspices, um, a trial that took place in Scotland. Um, there was a railgun facility established by the Brits, uh, excuse my accent, um, in, uh, in the southwest corner of Scotland. And uh, so we, uh, we all hiked up there, uh, participated in some local beverages, um, and uh, uh, we were able to do some, uh, some experiments up there. So in honor of that, I've created a small plaque. Um, it has uh, what is called an armature. This is the plaque <laughs> to which current goes, and this is what drives the projectile. This is a subscale uh, armature.